Congratulations, you've chosen a Millermatic, a MIG welding power source with a proud history and today's technology. Millermatic welders are built to industrial standards of quality and durability for years of dependable use. This program covers the models 130, the Challenger, the 185, the 250, and the Vintage. There's a model here for almost any MIG welding application, from thin gauge up to half-inch mild steel, even stainless steel and aluminum. While the output powers vary, all share some important features. An industrial quality self-contained wire feeder with cast aluminum drive roll housing and reversible drive rolls for solid or flux cord wire, a rugged 16 gauge outer case, easy to operate heat controls and wire speed fine tuning, thermal overload protection of the power source, a gas solenoid valve, and the power cables, work cables, and MIG gun assemblies necessary to get you up and welding in a hurry. Before you start assembling your new MIG welding system, take a few minutes to review the safety information in the owner's manual. Sure, you may have heard it all before, but it's worth a little time to prevent unnecessary injury. Applying primary power to the Millermatic 130 is as simple as plugging the machine into a standard 115 volt AC 20 amp household receptacle. The Millermatic Challenger, the 185, the 250, and the Vintage all use single phase primary power of 200 volts or greater. The Challenger uses 230 volts AC, while the other models use jumper links to accommodate a range of voltages to fit your shop requirements. The owner's manual instructions are clear on how to change the primary voltage. The primary power cord can be hardwired to a fused line disconnect electrical box or an appropriately rated pendant with a female receptacle and a power cord plug can be used. The electrical service guide in your owner's manual has specific information on wire sizes, fuse ratings, and maximum wire lengths for various shop voltages. This example is from the Millermatic 250 manual. In addition to safety information and primary power hookup, your owner's manual contains helpful instructions for attaching the work table clamp, installing the weld gun, setting the polarity for solid or flux cord wire, and properly installing the drive roll. The owner's manual explains how to load the wire spool and feed wire through the drive mechanism and to the weld cable and MIG gun. Remember that when you check drive roll tension and wire feeding, the welding wire is electrically hot, so feed the wire against a board or concrete floor. The diagrams are easy to understand. Follow the book and you won't have any trouble. Before welding, you will need to provide a welding helmet with a number 10 shade, leather gloves, safety glasses, chipping hammer, wire brush, wire cutters, and small hand tools. The Model 130 and the Millermatic Challenger come complete with a sample spool of 030 flux cord welding wire, so they're ready to weld right out of the box. But to get the full benefits of the MIG process, you'll probably choose to have a cylinder of shielding gas, a regulator flow gauge, and a gas hose. Some Millermatic models are shipped with the regulator flow gauge as standard equipment. For other models, you will have to provide it. Plug the gas hose into the receptacle on the rear panel of your new Millermatic. And if you are an experienced MIG welder, you're ready to weld. Miller offers a variety of welding accessories to complement your new Millermatic, including running gear and cylinder rack for the Model 130 and the Millermatic Challenger, spool guns for aluminum, replacement MIG guns, gun cable holders, and consumable parts such as contact tips and cable liners. And if you are a new welder or you just want to brush up on some basic welding techniques, this next part of the video is for you. We'll be using a Millermatic 130 for these welding demonstrations. We've already done the initial setup of the machine. A spool of 030 solid welding wire has been installed and fed to the gun. And a bottle of shielding gas is in place on the optional running gear cylinder rack. 
We have a couple of things left to do before we're ready to weld. First of all, we need to adjust the shielding gas flow rate. We do this with the power source turned on and we have to actuate the gun trigger. Now that makes the wire hot. If we allow the wire to feed, it could come into contact with a work clamp or whatever that clamp is connected to. So Miller recommends that before turning on the power source, the drive roll tension be released so wire won't feed. Next, close the flow adjust knob, turn on the cylinder valve, turn on the power source, and while pulling the trigger on the MIG gun, open the flow adjust control until the gauge reads 20 cubic feet per hour. We'll be using 14 gauge metal for our demonstrations, so we'll check the door decal for our weld settings, set the front panel controls, and our equipment is ready. The most common weld joints are the butt joint, the T, the lap, the edge, and the corner joint. There are two angles that you need to be concerned about when you're making a weld, the travel angle and the work angle. The gun should be tilted between 5 and 15 degrees as it travels along the joint. When the gun is moved in this direction, it is a push angle. When it is moved in this direction, it is a drag angle. As a general rule, a push angle is used when welding on thin materials in the range of 14 gauge or thinner. A drag gun angle will give you more penetration, so it's used on heavier materials, 12 gauge and thicker. The second angle, the work angle, is determined by the joint design. For example, when you're welding a butt joint, the gun should be held so the angle is 90 degrees to either side of the gun. To weld the T-joint, the gun is held so the angle is 45 degrees to either side of the gun. On a lap joint, the weld is made at the point where the two pieces of metal overlap each other. It's best to aim the gun slightly more at the top piece so it will receive the same amount of penetration as the bottom piece. A major cause of defective welds is a lack of proper metal preparation. The area where the weld is to be placed must be clean and free of paint, rust, oil, and other contaminants. It's a good idea to grind, sand, or wire brush the area where the weld is to be made to ensure that it's clean. When you're making a weld, current flows from the welding machine through the gun cable, the gun, through the arc, the base metal, the work clamp, and work cable, and back to the welding machine. This is the welding circuit, and it's critical that it be complete and all connections properly made. When you're ready to weld, turn the machine on, put on your helmet and gloves, and get into a comfortable position. Hold the pieces in place and position the gun with the wire slightly above the joint. Make a tack weld by depressing the gun trigger. Slightly rock the gun from piece to piece. About two seconds should be adequate. Space the tack welds about three inches apart to minimize distortion. This is what a good tack weld should look like. Now you can begin welding. To minimize distortion, it's best to make skip welds. We're using a push angle on this thin 16 gauge stock. If you're left-handed, simply do the opposite. As you make the weld, watch the weld puddle. Move the gun to keep the welding wire on the leading edge of the weld puddle. A common mistake most beginning welders make is to travel too fast. Try to maintain about a quarter to three eighths inch of stick out. That's the distance between the end of the contact tube and the weld puddle. This is an example of a good weld bead. The machine settings and travel speed were correct. After you've gained some experience, you'll be able to tell when the settings are correct by listening to the sound of the arc. It should be a smooth, unbroken sound. To ensure good electrical contact at the welding gun, be sure that you change the contact tube based on the wire diameter that you're using. As far as shielding gas, you can use either carbon dioxide or a mixture of 75% argon and 25% carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide costs less and will produce a deeper, penetrating weld. The 75-25 mixture produces a smoother, less penetrating weld. If you're having trouble with burning through when you're welding on thin material, try using a mixed gas. Becoming an accomplished welder requires practice, so don't become discouraged if your initial welds are not satisfactory. Your Miller Welding Distributor can supply you with technical assistance and instructional videotapes from Miller Electric that can help to increase your proficiency. Millermatic welders are high quality power sources with excellent arc performance.
Because of the quality components and sturdy construction, you can expect years of service from your new purchase.